Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Friday, October 25th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 68 is Mother 2, likely better known by its English title, Earthbound. <laughs> Earthbound is one of the most delightfully charming games I've ever played. It's also influenced game design much farther than its initial sales would have you think. The game is a touchstone moment for the gaming industry. At a time when JRPGs were categorized by operatic storylines filled with drama, violence, and high stakes like Final Fantasy VI, Earthbound asked what it could do to lower the stakes, but still keep everything engaging and exciting. You play as Ness, a young boy with, apparently, uh, psionic powers. A meteorite crashes in his hometown, and being the adventurous lad he is, goes to check it out in the middle of the night. Unfortunately, you don't get very far, but then later your best friend next door bursts into your house saying he can't find his younger brother. So you go and search for him and find the kid at the crash site when some weird stuff starts happening. It turns out the meteorite is a time-traveling spaceship. This alien emerges in the form of a bug and explains that in the future a great evil takes over the world and they believe that Ness is a child of prophecy that could prevent this dire fate from coming to fruition. This alien guide is extremely powerful, at least compared to you at this point in the game, though it's referenced that they're not quite as powerful as they once were. It's a great thing they're going to help you on this big, epic, fate of the world hero's journey. Or when you drop off your friend and his brother, their mom thinks the alien is just an annoying fly and squashes it. Uh, for the most part, this is just about the only actual death in the game. Wanting to tell the story of a child going out on a quest to save the world, fighting all sorts of animals, evil people, and more, they wanted to keep in mind that it is a child. With loads of violence becoming inc increasingly normal in video games, uh, whenever you defeat an enemy in combat, you don't kill them. If it's a wild animal, it will say you tamed it, or if it's a person behaving weirdly due to corruption from the big bad evil threat, they return to normal. Robots do, however, get destroyed, so there is that, but basically, any living thing will live on and often become docile to you after you deal with them and sometimes kind of help you. So with no guide, Ness sets off to save the world armed only with a baseball bat. Combat in the game is admittedly pretty simple, but does definitely have some wrinkles. It's turn-based and you can perform a basic attack, use items, or cast a spell using the Psy function. Each character only learns a few different spells, but can learn multiple different strengths of them that increase their PP cost. These actions didn't really reinvent the wheel, and are quite straightforward, even by 1994 standards. There is, however, one thing that's really out there. Whenever your health changes, it's not instantly. There's a real-time component to this otherwise purely turn-based game where any increase or decrease in HP will apply over time with what's called the rolling meter. Basically, if your health hits zero, you won't die immediately if you're either already taking your action or are the target of an ongoing action. This means you might hit zero, but then still receive a heal to save you or to deliver some big attack on your way out, taking down enemies as you go. I know there's some strategies you can pull off with this, but ultimately, I play too conservatively with the game systems to really try getting good at timing that stuff out, but it is definitely very cool when it does work out by chance. 
like I said, other than the rolling health meter, the combat is pretty straightforward, at least mechanically. It's fine to even straight up good, but what really earns this game a high ranking is all of the non-combat stuff, and I don't even mean the story. As I mentioned, you have to stop the evil alien from gaining power, and the first step to doing that is going to these eight secret locations called sanctuaries and collecting melodies from them. Each one is guarded by a boss, which you find at the end of a dungeon of sorts. They're all a means to an end, and they work well for that. It's nothing crazy. There are some other interesting twists to the story as you go, but again, it's, it's not, you know... It's not Kefka blowing up the world, right? I mean, it's hard to compete and compare JRPGs that came out in 1994, story-wise, without making that comparison. But the world you're going through is pretty interesting, with a colorful cast of characters, and I mean that both in the sense of varied and out there, and also quite literally. Like, for example, on the way towards the Second Sanctuary, you have to deal with this cult that exists in a commune. They paint everything blue. Like their whole lives revolve around the color blue. They painted a cow blue. They're kooky, kind of fun, and oh wow, it's a good thing they edited the sprites for the North American release because that would stop being kooky and maybe uh, turn into some other K words. But defeating the cult leader allows you to free Paula, a psychic girl that becomes your first full-time party member, and then as you go on to find the remaining sanctuaries, you do pick up more. There's a lot of fun to be had with the different characters though, again, there's not that much depth to the combat systems. Ness is an all-rounder, Paula cares about magic, Jeff cares about items, and lastly, Pooh is kind of a worse Ness, but has access to a couple individual powerful and unique abilities. Outside of combat, they're all fun characters and offer a lot to the narration of the game. The game is just fun and light. I already talked about not actually defeating your enemies, but really, all of the little details are just phenomenal. The giant smash when you critically hit an enemy, the music and psychedelic backgrounds in combat, fighting gifts in perfectly little wrapped boxes, uh, fuzzy pickles. That is so great. I love fuzzy pickles. Uh, getting to skip fights if you grossly outlevel an enemy you run into is also a great touch. It's difficult for me to put into words what makes Earthbound so great and charming because it's really a combination of absolutely every single thing in the game. No individual part of Earthbound is particularly mind-blowing to me, but nothing stands out as bad either. But really, the game is far more than the sum of its parts, and it has a uniqueness to it that we really don't see again, excluding its sequel that didn't get released outside Japan, until over 20 years later. I could play a million Final Fantasies, Dragon Quest, Star Oceans, Mana, and pretty much every other JRPG game out there, but there's only one Earthbound. Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 67th favorite game, where they see me rolling, they hate in. I won't sing the rest of the song, don't worry.